My name is Josh Byrne, and for the last couple of years, I've been working on my own high-performance, sustainable housing project near Fremantle in WA. The project was called Josh's House, and I was driven to do it through a strong belief that there is a better way that we can be designing and building our homes. Now that the houses have been completed and are gathering data that shows that they work, I've set myself a new challenge. I'm heading off on a groundbreaking national research tour, visiting the very best affordable, high performance housing projects that I can find and bringing them together in one place for the very first time. I want to see if they truly are a realistic and affordable option for the mainstream housing market in Australia. And if they are, I want to know what's holding them back. This is Josh's house, star performance. I'm on my way to check out a project called the Zero Emissions House, which is about 30 k's to the north of Melbourne in an outer suburb. And it's a project that I've wanted to see for some time and I'm really looking forward to it. I reckon Melbourne is a great place to start my tour because it's under real pressure from rapidly increasing population and sprawling urban development. With this in mind, to me, energy efficient housing design should be a priority. The home I'm visiting is the result of a collaborative project between Henley Property Group, the CSIRO and Delphin Land Lease and was completed in 2010. It ticks the boxes to be part of my Star Performers research tour because the project's aim was to design and build an affordable and accessible high performance home for the mainstream market and, importantly, monitor it and collect data to prove that it works. Well. Here we are. I'm liking the look of it. Good to see a decent front yard landscape, which always rocks my boat. Michael. Hi, Josh. How are you? Nice to meet you. Come How in. Are you? Come in. Thank you. It's great to finally visit. Oh, come in. I want to show you around. What a beautiful home. Michael and his wife, Carol, are the new owners of the house. They've been living here for about a year and are settling in nicely. So how are you finding it, living here? Oh, look, we just love it. It's fantastic. The, uh, it's warm in the winter, it's cool in the summer, it's quiet, it's easy to live in. It's just a really nice place to be in. Yeah, it's once nice you've uh, been in a solar passive home, there's no going back, is oh, there? No. It's, it's, nice it's really fantastic. Solar passive design is the golden rule when looking to achieve a high performance, energy efficient home in Southern Australian climates. And this is reflected in this four bedroom, two bathroom family home. What this means is the orientation of the home makes use of our number one energy resource, the sun. This house uses the sun by having all living areas facing north, with windows positioned to allow light and warmth in, which is then retained by the insulated slab, walls, ceiling and double glazing. There's also clever block out screens and a motorised awning for summer shading, complemented by a high energy efficient and zoned ducted reverse cycle air conditioning system. The eight star rated home is also equipped with energy efficient lighting and appliances and a high efficiency solar hot water system. In fact, everything in the home runs on electricity, which is completely offset by its six kilowatt grid connected solar power system. The zero emission house, which by definition means the home generates more energy than it uses over the course of the year, also has rainwater tanks that feed the toilets and garden taps and a grey water diversion system for garden irrigation. I think this is a standout example and I'm interested to hear if it's cheap to run. Well this house here has no energy bills uh, whatsoever so that two, three thousand dollars that a, a typical household would have to spend on their uh, electricity and gas bills, this house has zero. In fact they're actually in credits. So do you think if the average home buyer knew the money they could save by having a high performance home, that they'd be asking for that? Yeah, look, I think that is true. And of course, electricity prices and energy prices are already going in one direction. Um, so those savings are going to get bigger and bigger uh, each year. 
Now I think there's a lack of understanding in the community about what is actually possible. Right from the start, that was our primary aim, was to demonstrate that this is quite feasible, quite doable, affordable, and you can achieve it. I think when people come to this house, they're expecting straw bales, mud bricks, and you know, something that looks a little bit sort of kooky. They see this house and they go, wow, it's a really nice house. It's slick, I'd love to live in this house. So I think they're quite surprised when they see what a zero energy house really looks like. So I think there's a little bit of market education required. And the other factor is, you know, the builders need a little bit of probably help getting up to speed with what's required. It's not rocket science, but there's a couple of little details that need to be ticked off as you go through design and construction. And one of the classics is air tightness. And, you know, to, to make a zero energy home in this climate, you can't be losing all that conditioned air to the environment through leaky windows and the like, and that's something that often gets overlooked. Air tightness is a concept that we don't hear much about in the warmer climate regions of Australia, but it makes complete sense, especially in a place like Melbourne, where you have to contend with bitterly cold winters and you don't want to lose warmth. But one of the things I'm most interested in is occupant behaviour. How does the way that people live in a home affect the performance? Homes do not operate uh, in isolation. They do need interaction with the, the, the occupants. They, people need to know how to ventilate the home, particularly in summer, you know, the natural ventilation, getting that overnight cooling of, of the home. Uh, and if you don't do that, the home is going to struggle to achieve what it's truly capable uh, of. So it is really important for, uh, for people to get that understanding and education uh, about how to operate their home effectively. I mean, it's going to be their biggest purchase that they're ever going to make. Working out how to operate it correctly and efficiently is really a key thing. And it's probably, like I say, it really is that missing part of the jigsaw about how do we educate people in the operation of their homes. The Zero Emission House has gathered some great experience and data in terms of occupant behaviour. The home went through a test phase when first completed and a large family moved in and pretty much ignored the tips to attain the best operational performance. But the results were compelling had a family living in the house that pushed it hard for a period of uh, around about two years and um, a as hard as the house was driven um, it always returned a credit on our uh, you know electricity bill. So you say that the, the people who were living here during that test phase they drove it hard that's an interesting term um, mm. how hard did they drive it what, what do you mean by that? Well going back to the car analogy you know like you can give someone an energy fuel efficient car or a very thirsty car you can drive a thirsty car easily and extend its fuel economy, but it's still going to be higher than that fuel efficient car, even if it was driven hard. So we've got a very fuel efficient house. They drove it hard, but it was still fuel efficient. At the wheel now, driving the home is of course Michael and his wife Carol. And they're keen to see what it can really achieve. But they're also finding that purely living in the home is already having an interesting impact on their family and friends. Something that's been interesting that's happened, we've had friends come out and visited and they've loved the house. We've spent a lot of time here, they've enjoyed being in it. The most interesting thing is that we've been to lunches and dinners later on with those same friends and they say, oh, tell everybody about your house. And we go, oh, look, no, they're not interested. Oh, yes, yes, you should tell them about it. And it's quite interesting. Everybody is engaged in the conversation. Yeah, there is a genuine interest, but I think that people feel that they can't access it in some way. It's, it's just a great way to live. It's where people ought to be. It, it's all, you know, what we should do, all be doing, I think. I think um, if we could uh, plant some seeds of, you know, I think best in class, if you like, sort of examples of what needs to be done, then the market gets to see that and people get to move into those little communities and, and actually the feedback will be, hey, this is fantastic. So it's like planting the seeds in different areas, I guess, and building up a little bit of a groundswell and momentum, and I think then um, everyone will move together. I think what the, the biggest thing to do would be uh, education. I think uh, education of the buying public. I think if they became aware of what is actually possible, what is actually doable, they would start demanding from, from the building industry. And I think then the industry would just naturally follow. The, the industry is out there, it will deliver what the client wants. I reckon that's a lovely home and clearly a very nice place to live, going by Michael's enthusiasm. I think we've seen that there's nothing particularly difficult, expensive or complicated about this high performance, zero emissions house. But it does leave me asking, why aren't there more of them?
I'll be following the performance of the Zero Emission House over the next 12 months as part of my research. And you can follow it too at joshushouse.com.au. And don't forget to join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter and sign up to our e-news. In the next episode of Josh's House Star Performers, I'm off to Sydney to visit a surreal setup, a home that's built purely for research on the side of a brick factory that's putting the design, materials and construction methods to the ultimate test and it's been wired up to collect data like I've never seen before.